Welcome to the In the Know Tennessee Show. I'm Hunter Osborne. And I'm Jared Daniels. Today on the show, we welcome Knox County Superintendent, Mr. Bob Thomas. Yeah, thank Thanks you. for coming, Mr. Thomas. Well, good morning. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Thank you, sir. First question, Mr. Thomas. Take us back to the beginning. What was it like growing up? Oh, gosh. I grew up in a small town, uh, very un unlike Knoxville in terms of uh, size, uh, actually uh, in rural West Tennessee. So I grew up on a, a small farm, about 50 acres. So growing up, I had an opportunity to, to do farm work, uh, do a little bit of labor and uh, enough to decide that uh, that wasn't what I wanted to do long term. So, uh, but uh, you know, I had a typical childhood, I guess, uh, in terms of growing up and played sports. Uh, uh, Fortunately, uh, really, uh, the town I grew up in, the high school, it was one high school town, um, and uh, the football team was really, uh, really good. Uh, my senior year, we uh, we lost, I think, uh, one ball game, I guess. Uh, uh, so we were very fortunate there. But uh, uh, I participated in baseball, basketball, football, track. So uh, wasn't a whole lot, of, wasn't a whole lot of things to do. Uh, so participated in ath athletics and fortunately it was pretty much year round with four sports. So uh, uh, that's what I did and uh, uh, started uh, working, uh, I guess as in high school, I was a lifeguard for uh, a while uh, in the summers. And then also uh, my first uh, uh, job, I guess where more of an hourly rate, I was uh, a custodial. We had one hospital in the town and I was a custodian. Uh, there were several uh, other custodians. So I worked part-time, but uh, uh, did custodial work and also uh, serving meals to patients and, and that sort of thing. And uh, uh, I do remember one summer too, I guess working uh, uh, in a camp that uh, for, uh, as a camp supervisor where uh, other younger uh, children were participating in camp. So just uh, uh, a lot of my, my work time has been uh, uh, in, in service type of work so that's that's primarily what it was like growing up and uh, was very fortunate uh, uh, as a senior in high school to get a scholarship to attend the University of Tennessee uh, uh, actually a football scholarship I uh, didn't didn't play that much but I was on the travel squad and uh, I did get to go to several bowl games went to the Sugar Bowl uh, now they've, they've changed all these bowls uh, around a little bit but at the time uh, um, I was in school with Sugar Bowl, Gator Bowl, Liberty Bowl, uh, so got to go up participate uh, in, in several bowl games, uh, which was uh, which was very nice. And uh, uh, and at UT, I uh, met my my wife, who uh, was a student in Knox County Schools, and and uh, uh, graduated actually from Holston High School, which is now a middle school. So uh, that kind of takes you uh, takes you from my youth, I guess, to to what brought me to Knoxville and uh, came to Knoxville probably, I, I guess, as, as a senior, I was 17 years old and uh, we're still at my home uh, back in uh, in West Tennessee, but for the most part spent spent all my time uh, uh, here from that point forward. So uh, probably been in Knoxville now 60 years, a little over 60 years. So I feel like I'm a Knoxvillean at this point. So what can you tell us about Bob Thomas, the family man? Oh, uh, Bob Thomas, the family man. Uh, uh, of course, my wife, uh, Becky, uh, we've been married uh, this March. It will actually be 45 years. Uh, so uh, I have a lovely uh, wife and we've had a happy marriage. And uh, and after we started dating, I guess, uh, uh, I guess we've been together longer than 45 years if you count the period of time we dated. But uh, so we, we were married uh, 12 years, I guess, when uh, our son was born. So we we were kind of set in our ways for uh, by that time, so it was uh, it was a little bit bit uh, uh, of a change, uh, I guess, when uh, when Becky got pregnant with our with our son uh, uh, Brandon, and um, uh, Brandon went to Knox County Schools. Actually, he uh, went to Shenandoah uh, at Gresham and Central, graduated from Central High School, then went on to UT and. Uh, got a, an, his engineering degree, uh, mechanical engineering, and then uh, a bachelor's degree, and then he got a master's degree in um, uh, environmental engineering. Uh, so he is, uh, he's now living in Denver. I mean, he's married, his wife's from, from Denver, and he's living in Denver, Colorado, and working as an engineer. So uh, uh, we have, uh, we've always uh, had a pet. Uh, uh, right now, our, our pet is Melody, a Dalmatian, and she's uh, getting close to about 14 years old. So she's a bit of an old girl these days, slowed down some, but 
Uh, uh, Becky and I just like to, we, we spend time together. We, I, we don't travel a whole lot because my job uh, pretty much is, uh, uh, um, this job in particular, 24-7, 365. So, uh, so it keeps me pretty busy. So, uh, uh, but we enjoy our time together and, and uh, still go back. Uh, we go back to West Tennessee, which my, my parents are deceased now, but uh, left a small farm to uh, my brother and I, and uh, we we occasionally get uh, get back to West Tennessee, and I do some do some physical work on the farm to to uh, to uh, get some uh, I guess stress relief kinds of activities in. So I enjoy enjoy that kind of work. So uh, we go back a few times a year and and uh, and do that. And uh, that's that's pretty much uh, other than work. I, I used to play a little bit of golf, but uh, uh, the job lately. Uh, doesn't really afford me an opportunity to go play golf, so uh, I don't do that. I do like to uh, to exercise. Uh, um, my my workouts consist usually of walking. I try to walk uh, uh, regularly and, and at, a, at a decent pace, uh, uh, and and try to keep myself in shape because I feel like that's that's going to help me perform better if I can keep my uh, keep my body in shape. So uh, that's pretty much uh, pretty much me in a nutshell, I guess, as a family man. What, can you tell us where your love of education came from? Uh, yes, I, I guess as I mentioned, uh, growing up, uh, uh, sort of from the service kind of standpoint, working, uh, working, serving others is what uh, is is what I've spent a large amount of time doing. I guess throughout my life, uh, my mom uh, was a surgical nurse uh, there at the hospital, and uh, uh, just watching and growing up, uh, watching her and growing up in the house that I grew up in. Um, and, and seeing her, uh, her love for serve, serving others, uh, I guess instilled in me. And, and uh, my dad was a, a rural route carrier, um, also sold, uh, sold insurance and, uh, uh, and farmed on the side. So he was always pretty busy, but uh, a lot of what he did was, again, was serving. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, I'm working in a camp, uh, just, just enjoyed working with youth and, um, that's pretty much what put uh, I guess where I get my uh, my values from in, in, in terms of serving others and and being there for others and helping others and uh, uh, so education uh, uh, certainly lend itself to that because you're helping uh, helping young men and women and and educating them and uh, so that they can uh, can hopefully live their life dreams whether that's going on to college or whether it's going on to a career uh, but just to, just to try to prepare uh, prepare students for for the rest of their life and just so they'll have those be able to have the opportunities that uh, uh, for themselves that they want to have so uh, and I was a teacher uh, for and a teacher and a coach actually for um, eight years um, I got my start at, at the time at Bearden junior high uh, I taught one year uh, there and uh, actually coached at Bearden High School and, and the next year a position, a teaching position opened up at the high school so I moved to Bearden High School and, and taught and coached uh, there at Bearden and, and you never know uh, uh, you never, you never know when, when, with your students, what, what might, what they might do later on. But, but, uh, uh, gosh, our county mayor, uh, Tim Burchett, uh, was one of the, one of our football players. So while I was at Bearden High School, so I had an opportunity to, uh, to uh, coach uh, Mayor Burchett, and uh, of course he had a brother and a sister that also played sports and uh, uh, knew them real well too. So you, you just never know. You know your students when when you might see them again in what position you know they might be in. So uh, uh, kind of ironic in a way that uh, he was a student and a player, and then uh, now county mayor and responsible for um, uh, our budget in terms of, uh, of recommending uh, a budget for us. So uh, you know it's just a, and it's also important I think in terms of having you know relationships, the ability to build relationships with students so that uh, I still have uh, uh, students I'll see today. They call me coach, uh, which is uh, which is an honor because uh, again uh, just uh, just uh, just being in a position where you can serve others is uh, has been uh, been what my life's about. So what are some jobs you've had to help you like be superintendent? Oh goodness gracious! I sort of laughingly said this is. I started my 45th year uh, in education uh, as of I think September 24th. So uh, uh, I, I laughingly say I've had uh, the longest internship 
uh, that a person can have to get to the position I'm in. So, uh, but uh, uh, my years as a teacher, um, well, I actually started out, uh, before I got my regular teaching job, I actually started out substituting. So I was a substitute teacher for a short time before getting a, a regular position. But uh, my job teaching uh, certainly has helped prepare me just to know what it's, what it's like. And I know it's different today in the classroom than it was when I was in the classroom. But uh, just having um, uh, lived the life of, of a teacher and, 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 and having done the work of a teacher uh, helps me to have a better understanding of what it's like in the classroom. Um, also, I served as an assistant principal uh, at rural high school and that gave me an opportunity to, uh, to again to, to work with teachers, work with students. Uh, uh, the thing about being an assistant principal, a lot of times you see you see the negative kinds of things. You don't see a whole lot of positive, but uh, but again, just to uh, students who maybe are having problems, behavioral problems, and that sort of thing, trying to help them and and uh, get that behavior corrected, get them back in the classroom, and and uh, again try to instill into them uh, what the importance of getting an education. So the work as assistant principal was good because I, I worked worked with a variety of students, worked with uh, all the teachers that were on the staff, uh, got to work with the principal and see. Uh, what, what it was like being principal and um, and then after serving as an assistant principal served as principal at rural high school for uh, for two years so then uh, you know then you, 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 you the buck stop you know my office in terms of all the responsibility and 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 so forth and we had some challenges uh, rural is a good school and uh, uh, but uh, at that time uh, uh, gosh, there was a requirement for proficiency for math and language arts, and there were some things that uh, that were required for diploma. So we were real pleased. We made a lot of progress uh, with the, with the students in terms of of uh, having. I think we ended up uh, maybe having 99 percent of our students eligible to to, to graduate. So that was uh, that was really good. But it just uh, that gave me an opportunity to 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 see the school from a little different uh, light in terms of working with teachers and stu and uh, and students and. From uh, the principalship, I uh, went into a position at the time that was called personnel department, and this was with the Knoxville City Schools. And I worked, it was a new position, it was called personnel specialist, and I worked as a personnel specialist uh, for, uh, for a few years, and my primary responsibility uh, in that job was working with our classified employees, with uh, teacher assistants, uh, custodial employees, food service, uh, maintenance, um, uh, school secretaries, bookkeepers, things of that nature. So work with principals, staffing schools, and and working with employees. So that was uh, gave me yet another perspective in terms of the whole school operation and how important and how valuable our classified employees are in terms of making us what we are. So uh, I had that opportunity, and then. Um, I think it was maybe 1987, the, the city school system went out of business and we became one school system, Knox County Schools. So I, uh, I remained in the personnel department at that time, but then became a supervisor of personnel when a position opened up. And I worked um, in that position, primarily staffing teachers at uh, the, the middle school and high school level. So I got to work with uh, uh, all of our, our middle school principals and our high school principals in terms of staffing positions and uh, interviewing teachers and uh, placing teachers. So uh, that was really a uh, really, uh, positive experience for me and a good experience, I think, in terms of preparing me for what I'm doing now. And, uh, uh, and then in 1990, uh, position, the position of assistant superintendent uh, for finance and HR opened up in the school district and uh, fortunately uh, for me, Superintendent Huffmeister, who was superintendent at the time, uh, uh, put me in, or placed me into that position. So I was assistant superintendent from, oh gosh, 1990 until, uh, until was assuming this position, but uh, yet more, more of an experience for me because at that time I was working uh, not only with the Human Resources Department, but, but with the uh, um, uh, the budgeting and finance department so uh, allowed me to get uh, years and years of experience in terms of, of working with county commissioners and working with our, our superintendent and school board and in developing budgets and getting budgets approved and actually spending you know the spending plan for the school district so uh, um, uh, just that that uh, that experience in in finance uh, has helped prepare me because the superintendent again my, 
my responsibility, one of my responsibilities is, is recommending a budget to the Board of Education. So uh, making sure that, that that budget lines up with what uh, what our strategic plan is and uh, and uh, then spending that money in, in, uh, in a way that uh, you know, we're concerned is for, that we spend it in the manner um, in, a, in, in the right manner from the standpoint of this taxpayer dollars. We want to be good stewards of the taxpayer dollars and and um, also we want to uh, uh, take the budget which is 471 million dollars and then try to accomplish what what the goals are for the for the Board of Education. What kind of leadership style would you say that you have? Oh gosh my leadership style has probably changed over the years a bit I guess. Uh, uh, again I'm a big believer in, in servant leadership that uh, part of my responsibility is, is working with our staff and, and trying to support them in what they're doing and to help get them what they need to do to do their job. It's, it's, serving, uh, it's serving our students, it's, uh, it's uh, the stakeholders I guess if you want to say that that's, but I feel like our students are certainly stakeholders, our teachers, our other employees, our parents, our community. Uh, so just uh, I see my role as uh, uh, is, is, is serving uh, all stakeholders and uh, um, in terms of, of the way the way I work is more of a participatory style of leadership and working with the staff uh, that uh, my direct reports uh, and and giving them uh, asking them their their opinion um, uh, taking their opinions in consideration and then making making decisions uh, as a group you know the buck does stop with me but uh, the final decision rests with me but again as, as much as I can involve our other staff who who are certain have the expertise in all the different areas uh, I uh, take advantage of, of that um, also to me leadership is situational uh, some some situations uh, and, and again, by that, you know, sometimes it it, it calls for for a time when maybe you know you you well you hold people accountable, but maybe you have to discipline people. But uh, uh, certainly, uh, I believe in uh, in praising people and rewarding uh, performance and things of that nature. So again, it's it's based. It's based on the, the particular situation you're in at the, in, at the time. So, uh, and, and and sometimes my my not my, my leadership would be follow followership, I guess, in terms of, of letting others step up and and, and take the lead. And uh, uh, I do believe, uh, in terms of the way I try to operate, you know, the credit uh, credit goes to others. If there's blame, then it's uh, it comes to me. So. Uh, uh, try to take responsibility in that way, but uh, every opportunity where we can can praise others and give credit, I uh, uh, feel like that's uh, that's what we need to do. What I try to do. Education is constantly changing. How do you find out what's working and not working? Well, we we are we have several different programs in Knox County that, uh, uh, in turn, when I say several different programs, we have uh, of course Project Grad, we have uh, Leadership Academy, we have. Um, community schools, um, uh, just some different kinds of programs such as that. That And I, one, one, uh, when I actually uh, applied for this position and interviewed for this position, one of the, the uh, platforms I guess that I sort of stood on was the fact that uh, we're going to look at, we're going to have program evaluation. Sometimes it's really hard to, to separate programs to see if you have something that's doing good. Can you really separate it out and say, well, this is the cause of that, and, and sometimes that's pretty difficult to do. But, but just uh, looking at program evaluations, we have a research and evaluation and accountability department, and uh, it's really, uh, really a strong department with some, some very uh, uh, smart folks, and they're able to look at some of our programs and do an evaluation of those so that we can see what's working, what's not working, and if something's not working. Uh, and we're spending money on it, then maybe we need to look at spending that money differently on something that would be more, more effective. So, uh, but um, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's really hard to single that out. But uh, that's one thing that we're looking at this fall is, is several different program evaluations to, to so that we can can uh, present those to our board and then let the board make the decision. You know, if it's something that they want to continue or if it's uh, a decision maybe to go a little bit different direction. Pretty much how we look at things. Okay. Leadership and integrity. What do those words mean to you? 
Oh gosh, uh, uh, integrity. Um, uh, gosh, it's about uh, uh, being honest. It's about being truthful. It's about um, you know, moral character. It's it's about uh, uh, doing what you say you are. You know, you probably have heard. You know, actions actions are much more important than, than words. You know, if you say one thing and do another, uh, you know, people believe what you do more so than they believe what you say. So uh, uh, from an integrity uh, standpoint, just uh, and following through on, on the things that you, you say that you're, you're, you're gonna do, but uh, about making, uh, I think, ethical decisions, moral decisions, and uh, uh, being honest and, um, it, it's what my beliefs are. I guess about integrity, about about leadership. Uh, um, uh, again, it's like we talked about a few minutes ago, being more of a uh, servant leadership style. I guess in terms of I, I really work for everybody else. They think I work, you know, they think they work for me, but I, I really work for them, and uh, uh, that's that's what I believe about leadership, and you know, it's about. Uh, building relationships with people. It's about having a positive influence on people. It's, it's about, again, being a role model. It's about not not asking somebody to do something that you're not willing to do yourself. Uh, and and the expectation for me is to, to model the behavior, you know, that I expect. And uh, um, so it's, it's really, it's, leadership is just a combination, I guess, of, of the, the participatory participatory style, the situational style, the uh, servant leadership. Um, so. Where do you see Knox County in five years? Oh gosh, uh, what I would love to see, uh, of course, we the, the, the priorities that we have are increasing student achievement, uh, building a positive culture, uh, and eliminating disparities. Uh, in five years from now, I would love to see uh, um, our student achievement, of course, increase. I'd love for uh, I'd love for every student to make a 36 on the ACT. That'd be uh, that'd be the goal I have. Now, you know, no, no, that that's a, probably not going to happen. But the, the the state looks at a, at, at the ACT as a as a 21 on the ACT ensures. Well, I say ensures. It's a, an indicator of uh, of of. Uh, college readiness and career readiness so uh, certainly would like to have all of our students scoring very minimally a 21 on the ACT uh, uh, because that, again that's the uh, that's the guideline so uh, five years from now I would I would love to see our ACT scores increase um, but so again as an indicator that we're preparing students uh, to the point where they can be successful whether they they go to college or go to a career realize not every, everyone's going to college so then and understand that, but but the careers and careers are changing, so it's it's really important that we prepare our students uh, and give them the very best educational opportunity. So, you know, and building that positive culture uh, in our school district, just it's, it's about building relationships. It's about it's about my relationships with uh, with with everybody I work with. It's about teachers' relationships with their students. It's about principals' relationships with with their students and with uh, you know their teachers and. Um, and again, working in the central office, uh, you know, again, from a servant leadership point of view, I want our central office to also uh, be, be a servant. Uh, if it weren't for the students out in the schools and the teachers out in the schools and the principals, there would be no need for a central office. So uh, just to help get that mindset across that we're all there to serve and, and uh, to help our principals and help our teachers to do the very best uh, uh, best job that they could do and be, be supportive of them. So I, I would hope in five years that, uh, you know, the culture in our school district, you know, is really positive. And that's not to say we don't have a positive culture today, but I think you can always get better. You can always improve and be better tomorrow than you were today and better next week than you were this week and next month better than last month and next year better than last year. So it's just working to get better every day. Uh, it's also about uh, eliminating disparities. We've got uh, uh, disparities and in, in ach achievement gaps with some of our subgroups. And when I say subgroups, uh, uh, students who, who have uh, disabilities, we have English language learners, we have economically disadvantaged students, uh, have uh, you know, African-American, Hispanic students, and, and there are achievement gaps there uh, uh, between, between those subgroups. So I'd like to eliminate those disparities. Uh, uh, in, in terms of courses that we offer, make sure that, that across the school district in every school, um, 
students have have the educational opportunities that uh, that are uh, consistent. Uh, just because I go to one school versus another school, there shouldn't be opportunities at the, at this school that uh, that I go to that another school doesn't have. The students don't have those opportunities. So, just working to to eliminate those kinds of disparities. Um, uh, also, there's a, there's some disparities when you even look at graduation rate, uh, and 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 make sure you know once again we want we want more of our students graduating each year, but we also want that diploma to meant to uh, student to be able to do what that diploma says they can do, and uh, and again that being I, I can go to college and, and and know that I'm prepared and can be successful if I apply myself, or I can go to a, a career and know that I can be successful because we you know, we have done our, our best job to prepare you. So so I, I would love to see, uh, gosh, 100% attendance from all students in five years, the 36 on the ACT, um, uh, no disparities in our school district. So uh, yeah, that'd be my dream. <laughs> so we'll, we may not get there, but we'll, we'll work hard to try to do the very best we can. What would you say is your biggest su success so far? Oh goodness! Uh, well, I've only been in the job uh, what seven months, a little over seven months now. Uh, I was real pleased, uh, although our teachers and principals worked to prepare all of our students last year that, that graduated. We had somewhere around 3,900 uh, students graduate, so I got to shake most most every one of those hands um, and going across the stage. But just uh, so proud to see our students, uh, you know, finish up and and uh, and graduate, and, and proud of the fact that uh, that those students earned almost 148 million dollars worth of scholarships. That's just phenomenal. And just such a huge number, but uh, but just uh, I thought graduation last year uh, was a real success. We've uh, we've also uh, uh, received our ACT scores. Our, our district average is 21.1, which is good. Uh, not every high school has that average, so that's that's out there for us to to work toward. But uh, uh, just having uh, the state the, the goal for the state, I think in 2020, is to have this, uh, 21 average on the ACT. So. So in, in terms of all the large districts, the four large districts, we, we, we had the highest ACT score, not, not the highest in terms of individual schools, but if you look at a district average, we, we, we were the highest among the four largest school districts. So I felt like that was a, a, a real success for us. And uh, well, when, we, when we received our end of course test uh, this year, actually we made some improvements in, in English and U.S. history. So, so certainly proud to see those successes. We, we actually dropped a little bit in math and uh, dropped a little bit in science. So we'll we'll work to try to to uh, to overcome uh, to overcome that. But uh, um, and just the fact that uh, we we recently our board recently approved a memorandum of understanding with our teachers. It uh, has to be renewed every every three years. So that at the last board meeting, uh, we were able to uh, our board was able to approve that that memorandum of understanding, which is with the Knox County Education Association. So felt like that was a success, and, and uh, uh, excuse me, has a, has us uh, headed in the right direction for the next three years. So, so hopefully we'll have uh, uh, many more successes because we we do have outstanding uh, teachers, uh, educators. We have outstanding principals uh, uh, leading our schools. So, and, and uh, not to take away from the students, uh, uh, just 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 like y'all y'all are right here, outstanding students in our school district. So. Uh, so I think the the, uh, the way is upward for us. So I feel real positive, real good about that. What's something you would change if you had to do it over again? Oh goodness. Uh, well, as a message to students, if I had it to do over again, I would have worked harder in school. I would have applied myself uh, more than what I did. So uh, uh, you know, just looking looking back at it, there. Uh, and I, that's not to say that I didn't study and I didn't make decent grades, but you know what? I would have, I would have, uh, I would have done better uh, had I, if I had it to do over again. I would, I certainly would have, would apply myself. And uh, uh, not that my parents didn't encourage me to to do that, they did, but uh, I, I just could have, I could have done better. So in terms of my my work history, I, uh, I don't think I, when I look back, I don't think there's anything I would change. I, uh, for a long time, uh, I wanted an opportunity to 
to uh, to be the superintendent of schools. Uh, it happened sort of late in life for me, but uh, I feel like I've got a few good years left, and I want to give 110 uh, percent for every one of those good years I feel like I have left, and uh, I just feel like my experience has prepared me for for this, and I appreciate the board, the board of education. Uh, um, having confidence in me to, to do this job and giving me uh, giving me this this opportunity, uh, so it's a uh, it's been a dream for for me for a long time to be in this position. Um, I actually, I went 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 or applied for the position the last time it was open and uh, uh, didn't get that opportunity, but um, uh, to do so. But uh, Dr. McIntyre, who was our former superintendent did, and he very graciously uh, kept me on board and kept me in my position and allowed me to learn and to grow under his leadership, and uh, I'm very appreciative of, of that. So I can't really look back at anything and say, okay, gosh, I wish I had uh, wish I had done this. Uh, so I think from, from my standpoint, that's a that, that, that'll be a, a positive way to end my career when I feel like you can, you can look back and say, you know, gosh, I wouldn't have really changed anything. We like to end things here with a fun question. How do you decide if we get a snow day? Oh my! <laughs> uh, well, it's a, it's a, it may not seem like a, a real involved decision, but it really is. Um, we have several people that we involve in, in terms of making this decision. Yeah. Certainly, uh, we listen to the weather and watch the weather forecast. Uh, we also have a connection with uh, the weather center there in Morristown that uh, we, we get the latest updates on. So when snow's predicted, we, we start watching that very closely, very carefully, and getting those reports sometimes. Uh, as, as soon as they're updated, we get, we get them. We also uh, um, uh, make sure that we're we're in contact with the, the folks that maintain the roads, like what kind of road conditions are out there because folks get out on the roads and try to make them as safe as they can, uh, as early as they can for people who have to travel. So so we, we uh, talk with uh, the, the folks that are out there doing that. We talk with law enforcement, uh, uh, the sheriff's department, uh, the police department in terms of road conditions to see how see what their reports are. We, we actually run the roads with uh, some of our, our uh, folks who work during the night. Um, we have contractors that get up early, bus contractors that get up and uh, uh, go out and, and they report back to us road conditions and things of that nature. So it's, it's a pretty involved situation. We, the, easy situ, the, the easy call is when things happen at night and you know, you know the next day you can go ahead and call because we do take into consideration uh, parents because they like to know you know, as early as they can possibly know. And sometimes around here, it just seems like the weather pattern is, it, uh, they'll say one thing at night and then maybe it'll be delayed. And sometimes we're early morning trying to call school off and we, we would prefer not to do that because we know it creates a, a hardship for parents uh, when the, the later the notice comes out. But, uh, but we try to do the best we can given the information that we're given. And it's not a uh, decision that's taken uh, lightly because we do the, the safety of our students and, and our staff is, is, is what's most important. So uh, um, and we, we start, uh, if we, we're not able to call it early uh, in the evening on the night before, we, we, uh, we, we try to do these things around 4 a.m. in the morning so staff, uh, staff is getting up and we're talking uh, uh, via phone to each other and conference call and, and also talking to other superintendents and what they're seeing and, and their road conditions and all. So it's a, it's a pretty labor, it doesn't maybe sound like it would be, but it's a pretty labor intensive uh, situation. And then, you know, sometimes no students and, and staff probably happy about this. You call it and nothing happens. And then, and then people get really upset at you, you know, what'd you call school off for? There's no snow. And, and then we've even had this in some of the work in the, in the terrain in which we live. Sometimes the snow will happen one part of the county and not another part of the county. But uh, uh, when we call it, we call it the decision countywide. So uh, sometimes people don't understand, well, there's no snow outside my door, so I don't know why you're calling school off. But uh, there might be another part of the county the road conditions are hazardous and we just need to need to call it so that uh, we, we can um, have, have safe conditions for students and staff. So uh, I haven't, uh, I've, been a, I've been a part of the process over the years, but uh, uh, this will be my first winter, I guess, where the buck again will stop with me in terms of, of making that decision. But uh, I do rely on, on a lot of other folks uh, in terms of, of getting to that decision. 
Well, that's going to wrap up the In the Know Tennessee show. Okay. Thanks to our special guest, Knox County School Superintendent, Mr. Bob Thomas, for being here today. Yeah, thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be, be here with you, and I appreciate you having me. And uh, uh, gosh, thank you for the interview. You guys did a, did a terrific job, so thank you. Also, a special thanks to the Bonington CTE Center AV production crew for producing today's show. Thanks for watching.